Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Deck and Walk videos. Today we are doing Libra 2. So this is the Libra 2 video, which can be kind of confusing because we're going from the Two of Swords to the Three of Swords. So even though it's Libra 2, we're looking at the Three of Swords. So that can be a little confusing, so don't let that trip you up. All right, so I've spent a lot of time thinking about this Deccan and the way it came across. And I am so confused on like what elements, how, like I, I don't, I don't have anything to talk about with this. I'm not sure how this came to light. I don't feel like I have a lot of decisions. It was a, a pretty quiet deck and um, I'm not really sure how any of this came into play, to tell you the truth. I, I don't have, like, nothing jumps out at me. Nothing sticks in my mind. Like, it's just, I've been, you know, working and doing, like, my own personal practice. Uh, my downtime, I've just been watching, like like movies and like scary movies and stuff. So like I have no idea how this has come across because nothing has come forward in my life that reflects any of this. So I'm a little confused on this deck and for myself. And I'm trying to think of like even like my husband like my husband and if anything's really come forward for him and there hasn't been. There hasn't really been anything. So I'm not I'm not really sure. The only thing I can say is that when we bought this place five years ago, we knew that our time here would be restricted simply because the volume of this place and the amount of work that it needed. And being the age that we are, we knew that we were eventually going to get to the point where we either financially couldn't afford something that needed to be done or we simply just don't have the resources, whether it's energy, whether it's like physical restrictions, like whatever it is, right? Because I, I have a lot of injuries that my body has received over the years and my husband has had a lot of similar injuries that he has received, you know, from work over the years. So we both aren't in tip-top shape. We both have a lot of physical um, old it injuries that restrict us and the things that we can do. So we kind of knew that like we were only going to be here as long as we could be here. So we have started to talk about when that time comes. And I'm not saying it's anytime soon, but when that time comes, when it presents itself, what exactly are we going to do? And that might be the only thing that I can say happened during this decan that could could relate to this right so maybe just looking at our different choices trying to figure out where we would go honestly naturally we both want to return home from where we're from and be with our families more and be available to help them and and hang out with them and do things with them but then there's other aspects of it as well too. So where we kind of want to go a different direction. So, I mean, who, who knows, who knows, but I think that's the only thing I can say is that there's been a lot of talking about when the time comes that we don't want to be here anymore, or we physically can't take care of this place anymore. Where do we want to go? So I think that's kind of the only thing I can think of that falls into this. All right, so let's flip out these new cards. It's got all the new stuff in here. And let's look and see what's coming forward. And you guys know what the next card is. And I'm I'm really sorry about that. Um, this is not going to be a lovely, a lovely deck. And I'm I'm forecasting a lot of issues, right? Because we're leaving the two of swords and the high priestess. And we're going to the Three of Swords and the world, which is very much about that completion, right? Um, and that's weird that I just talked to you about how, like, 
things completing here and us knowing when it's time for us to not be here any longer. And it's kind of weird that that's all, I don't know. It's strange. Anyways. Okay. These don't change. Nothing has changed up here. We are, we've just got a little bit changing here. I've already changed these out. So let's flip these hermetic tarot here. So we have got the Three of Swords, which is Lord of Sorrow. We've got the Universe, which is gr the Great One of the Knight of Time. And then we've got Justice, Daughter of the Lord of Truth. Our planetary influence is Saturn. And these don't change. These are all the same. However, this is the last deck and with the Queen of Swords. So next video, we'll be swapping out the Queen of Swords. All right, so that's the new energies that are coming into place. And right now I can tell you it's definitely the completion of something. It's definitely the ending of a chapter. We are, um, we're in the middle of eclipse season. And today is the day of the new moon, which I knew, but today is the solar eclipse. So we had a partial lunar. We're now in the solar eclipse. And then the next one's on October 17th, I believe is what it said. And it's the lunar eclipse again. So uh, a lot of endings and beginnings, right? So we'll, we'll get through this. We can get through this. I feel like this is a really hard card. Um, one of the harder, harder, one of the hardest cards, in my opinion, of tarot. That and the tower. So I don't know. We'll see. We still have a, we still have some, we still have some rough cards coming, but we'll see what this brings in. Just stay positive and know whatever is removed is removed for the highest of good, right? Something to align us, something to reinstore balance, something to get us back on the track. All right. As usual, I'm going to get into Susan T. Chang's book. We'll read a little bit. I'm going to read a little bit um, out of the books on the Hermetic Tarot and all of that different stuff. And then our video will be complete till the next one. All right. So once again, reading from The 36 Secrets by Susan T. Chang. Awesome book. All right. In the book, she says, The Three of Swords is known as the Lord of Sorrow. Unlike most people, I really like this card. But it was not always the case. In 1996, when I was first messing around with tarot, I kept notes in a tacky spiral notebook covered in purple velvet. Under my Three of Swords entry, I recorded a painful encounter in which I witnessed my ex taking up with someone new on the ballroom floor. And then she goes on to talk about how she used to be an avid ballroom dancer back in the, her days. When I got home, I listened to the Cannonball Adderley's recording of the Dancing in the Dark and learned to play it on my saxophone, tears streaming down my fingers and over the valves. Oh, to be young and feel love's keen sting again. For many years, that is all I thought it was, other people's heartbreaks and my own. Visually, the Three of Swords is easy to parse, and often its stark appearance draws cries of tearful recognition, even from those unfamiliar with tarot. Sometimes it's painful to face the inevitable, to know that things you can't unknow, but over the years I have found that there are many forms of this knowledge, and not all of them pierce the heart equally. And then she goes on to talk about the Queen of Sorrows and how it relates to the Queen of Spades. She refers to the Kambala, the Tree of Life, a bunch of different things. She talks about how with the influence of Saturn, it can be about binding contracts and like legally locking you into things. Um, she talks about how justice is applied to the situation. And like I said, I leave this for you guys to discover. Like, I don't want to just read everything. This is important for you guys to have this journey, um, this personal journey yourself with these cards, right? And then let's spend a little bit of time. We're going to talk about the threes, right? So in her book, she talks about the three of swords and the other cards, the other threes. The key word that she likes to use for threes is shaping. If you add shaping or maybe taking shape 
to your four suit keywords, whatever they are, you can see the subtle ways that term inflects through the suits. So she's got three of wands, drives and ambitions taking shape. The three of cups, emotions taking shape. Four of swords, thoughts or conflicts taking shape. And then three of pentacles, material resources taking shape. I actually really like that, the whole taking shape thing. That makes a lot of sense. So if we go back to the three of wands, drives and ambitions taking shape, the Lord of Virtue stands for the warrior who conquered in the two of wands and whose visions now begin to take shape in reality. The three of cups, a sense of tribe or community, and arises where once separated people come together. Individual feelings merge into fellow feelings. It is the Lord of abundance, and it is a goodwill that abounds. The Three of Swords, thoughts or conflicts taking shape. Another way to put this is a dawning realization. Or, as previously described, the thing you can't unknow. Sober outcomes arise in the Lord of Sorrow. Three of Pentacles, material resources taking shape. The Lord of Work takes ingredients or building blocks and builds them into artifacts or products. Something greater than the sum of its parts. Right? And then she goes to show you all the different cards in the RW and the way that they look. I like that thought about putting, taking shape on the end of all the keywords for the threes. I like that. All right, and then she goes on to talk about in her daily life is very common, as she's mentioned, for the Three of Swords to show up on rainy days. Honestly, I don't know if it happens for other readers, and I would never suggest it's a core meaning of this card. It's a personal language that you develop over time with these cards. And while there is often a good deal of overlap in the language that readers use, enough so that we can communicate, there's also dialects idioms, personal slang. Rain is a personal slang for the Three of Swords for me. It probably has to do with the way that I imprinted on the Rider Waite Smith images back in the 1990s. I've also mentioned it comes up for contracts. Contracts signed, contracts fulfilled, and also at least once contracts canceled. I often see it in conventional meanings of relationship heartbreak, while I'm reading for clients, especially when they've gotten to the point where they know it's over and are just coping with the pain. I've gotten it on days I've cried for one reason or another, whether it's tears of frustration, tears of grief, tears of anger, even PMS tears. Finally, the Three of Swords sometimes speaks uh, to endings and expirations. I got it the day our Honda Civic died on the road and the day that our Christmas tree fell over and three ornaments crashed to the ground. Along these same lines, it seems to have a curious fascination with the spirits of the dead, as in a day I scried a coyote skull, and the evening I watched a Christmas carol with, uh, with its three ghosts and Scrooge's changing of his heart. The takeaway she has written here, when you draw the three of swords, there is something that you have no choice but to face. Hard, one, knowledge, irreversible realizations, the things you can't unknow. It might be the, recogn the recognition that a relationship is over. On the other hand, it actually might be the, recognize the recognizing that the relationship is the only one and you are prepared to forsake all others. It could be just rain, which is the expression of air becoming so saturated with humidity it can no longer contain it. Whichever the manifestation, it will invest with a dark grandeur. It could be sorrow. It could be solemn vows. When you feel the plangs of Saturn, the weights of uh, Bina or Brenna, the, the um, Kambala tree of life word there, it may help you to think of it in the very same way you think of rain, gloomy for sure and terrible for parades, but also the very water of life for everything that sustains us. All right, so that's reading out of her book. Uh, all right, so 
There's a couple different ways that this card can come at us from this deck in. I'm hoping it's nothing too crazy. I really honestly am not in the position to be to be dealing with crazy right now. Um, all right, let's get in here. We've already kind of seen Saturn before, but we'll read about him anyways again. All right, Saturn teaches us discipline. It creates limitations in order to grow. It is a strict parent offering a great reward for a job well done. Responsibility, maturity, dedication, perseverance, and structures are among its features. So that's what's kind of like the underlying planetary energy, right? So teach us some things, maybe reward us for our hard work. I don't know. It'll be really interesting to see how this all goes down. And I really, I really, like I said, I do not want, oh, this was like the last card I wanted right now to tell you the truth. I'm bummed. All right, let's find the three of, three of swords. All right, three hands hold three upright swords. The hilts of the two outer swords are different from the hilt of the middle one. The center sword with a quarter moon hilt cuts the rows of five petals seen in the preceding card as the junction at the junction of the swords broken petals fall to the ground above and below are the symbols of saturn and libra all right so there's our card of sorrow bummer I'm like, I'm so not looking forward to this. And I'm sure I'm making it worse than uh, what it's going to be, but who knows. And I'm sorry if it's a little loud today. The windows are open um, and there's a, a little bit of traffic going on. Hopefully it's not too disruptive. And then we have the universe. We already read about justice. If you need a refresher on that, you can go to the previous video and listen to what I have to say about that. Um, okay, so universe, the great one of the night of time. This card is attributed to Saturn, whose signs appear on the double-headed eagle and is represented by the two sickles. The background of the card, the sun, moon, and stars, represent the ever-expanding and ever-changing universe. In the middle of the card at the left is the sign of Taurus, represented by the bull. The sign of Leo, the lion, appears to the right. And... The man at the bottom suggests Aquarius. The eagle of Scorpio above completes the four signs. And yes, we've seen this one before. And I actually really like this card. I think it's super cool. The way it's drawn. Yes, beautiful card. All right, so there's our world card or the universe in the Hermetic Tarot. And then once again, the underlying energies is the Queen of Swords, the Ace of Cups, and the Page of Cups. And in Hermetic Tarot, that is the Ace of Cups, the Queen of Swords, and the Princess of Cups. Because remember, princesses are pages. All right, so there we go. And once again, like I always say, these are just the underlying influences uh, personalities that are going to come forward, people that you may meet during this deck in, uh, and this section of the wheel. And it just kind of gives you a better understanding of the personalities of these court cards and the aces, right? I do very much feel that queen of swords energy been hanging around lately. I do agree with that. All right. So that is kind of what's coming forward. That's what's going to happen. I wish everybody good luck. I hope nothing crazy happens, but I'm sure something will happen, right? It always does. All right, our next video, let me just get in here. Okay, so our next video. So this Deccan is in place from October 3rd to October 12th. Remember, it's the Three of Swords. So our next video will be October 13th. And we'll be looking at the Four of Swords. And then our Deccan of Libra will be done. Wow, time flies, eh, guys? All right. And then there'll be some changing happening and some different things being switched out. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I'm wishing everybody good luck. And hopefully this Deccan isn't too rough on everybody. 
Uh, pay attention to your contracts, to things coming to an end, completions. Maybe there's a few out of the few people out there that have been dealing with some relationship issues, different things like that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this comes forward. I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, like usually I have a little bit of stuff already happening and I can already kind of tell you what's going on. That has not happened yet. The last couple of decades, I haven't had that happen. And I've been kind of just feeling them out and seeing what's going on. Uh, maybe this part of the Zodiac wheel doesn't really affect me the same way that the beginning ones did. I'm not really sure. I don't think I have any Libra in my charts. However, my husband is a Libra. And if you watched in the previous videos, I have tons of Libras in my life. So maybe it's going to be about watching the hardships and the things that they have to go through, right? I have no idea. But I feel like everybody kind of gets something from these Deccans. And no matter what your birth chart is, no matter what signs you have, I feel that you get a little bit of something, right? So we'll see. I'll have to wait and see how this plays out and what goes on. And we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.